Hey guys, welcome back. I'm APT Songs. <laughs> Peace and love. I'm Neil. And this is, I guess, what we're calling Random Ass Conversations with Aaron, Random. APT, and Neil. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How you guys doing? Uh, it's been another eventful week in the news, uh, both entertainment and politics, and so we're, we're going to talk about it. All right. All right. Let's so, do it. So to start off with, uh, for those of you that watch us on TikTok, uh, we, we put up a, st a part of the story last week talking about uh, Northwest being at the Lion King uh, at the Hollywood Bowl where she did not sing great. And so we said that and we talked about things like nepotism and how, you know, like ultimately, if, you're, if you don't have the talent to do a, to a thing or have not practice a thing, maybe not do that. And so we got, we got a lot of views on that video, but there, were, uh, there was a, a general criticism that we had from some people who said that we should not be criticizing Northwest or even um, uh, Blue Ivy because they are kids and kids should not be up for such scrutiny. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, they have a point. However, they're children who choose to be in the public eye. So they want to be a talent. Um, they want to be seen. So, of course, they're subject to it. But as adults, we should uh, be careful about how we critique them. Mm, in terms of? In terms of being an adult and knowing that they're children and the impact that it could have on them in their teenage years as they get older. So it's okay to critique because they're in a space to where they are going to be judged because they're in a space where they have to be chosen. But like I said last week, Blue Ivy's situation was different because she was on her mother's tour. So she didn't have to audition. Well, she had to audition for her mom, but it's, mm. just, it's, it's a little different from being in the acting space or the music space where you have to go on audition or you have to submit your demo and then to get that constructive criticism for people from people who don't know you who don't love you mm. and who are looking for that next big talent so if you decide to be in a space where your children are going to be judged by auditions then you have to know that your children are going to be criticized by the public especially in today's society and the other thing too is these people are have already been in entertainment for years so when their kids come not, along yeah. what i'm saying so when their kids come along and say hey i want to do a thing like we I, we don't know if northwest actually wanted to do it or if she was getting pushed into it on stage i will say she looked like she was having a good time so i imagine that she wasn't mad at doing it but like that's a thing where the parents got to come in and say look this is how the industry works the reality is Kid or not, if you you're gonna get judged for your performance, whether it is good or bad, right. and you have to be prepared for that, and you have to teach your kids to be ready for that. Because like I think what we did last week wasn't any heavy like we weren't insulting her, we weren't saying she's a bum. This net, we were just saying objectively as people that no, you were saying. Well, I, I mean, as a person that's done theater for, for a while, <laughs> I just know that like I've been doing. Look, I, my first play that I did was in fifth grade. I remember uh, it was like me in a, in a Christmas play with a bunch of other students, and it was not great. We were kids. I was just happy to like have a have a part and say a few lines uh -huh. but it's like even back then I knew like not everybody may like this and right. I have to be cool with that like that's fine you know so I think there needs to be a realistic understanding that the parents give the kids that if people don't like this thing uh -huh. don't have your complete identity tied to whether people like you or not because in this industry you're going to get chastised a lot there are plenty of kid actors that have been in actual movies that people be like why did that kid get cast he was a bum he wasn't that great blah blah blah, blah. like that regularly happens okay well since you said your first play my first play was in preschool Really? And I played Rosa Parks. Oh, I didn't know that. And I remember my line was, I don't want to get off the bus. I don't want to get off the bus. Okay, we can move on because when you said that, it brought it up. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we just wanted to just wanted to cover that for you guys that, that were criticizing us. We understand. We're not here to insult children. But as... as no, I... I Okay. Yeah, we're not here to answer. We're not here to insult children. Yeah, you know, so anyway. Uh, so a lot of stuff happened this past week. Um, what do I want to start off with? Well, you had mentioned something about, about Angel Reese and the WNBA, so we should probably talk about that. Like, obviously, those are the two biggest stars in women's basketball last year before they joined the WNBA, and He's now... about Caitlin Clark. Clark Caitlin, yeah, Caitlin Angel Clark. Reese. Yes, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are, are now in the NBA, and so from what I've heard, Caitlin Clark, like, she's been getting a lot of... She, she's like the biggest thing on the, the team now, even though from what I hear, she's not doing all that great. But I could be wrong, so you have to let me know. I think the team that she's on mm -hmm. as a whole is not doing great. Okay. I think that she's making her contribution. Um, I think what is happening is society and mainstream media is starting to drive a narrative that 
it's just not true. Mm. And Kaylin Clark is a great player. Like, okay. But like Angel Reese said this week, she said that let's not forget that the reason why this game has so much attention was because of that LSU and Iowa game that they mm, played yes. like two years ago now. And it was the whole situation. The whole like doing the Tony and, on people's faces. Yeah. Right. Everybody <laughs> attacked Angel. But when you roll the tapes back, you saw that Caitlin Clark had been doing it. Yes. And so because of that moment and because Angel Reese decided to speak up for herself, um, and she even had the alter, uh, not the altercation, but the back and forth with the White House. Yes. Because traditionally the winning team goes to the White House, mm. but because Caitlin Clark lost, there was first an exception. Lady Joe Biden was like, "Well, we should invite them." To oh my God! And Angel Reese with ain't her that, ain't that like America? Ain't that like America? Black girl magic was like, <laughs> "No, winners don't get to go. They have the, lo- to the try, losers. The losers don't get, yeah, yeah, don't get to go. go. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have to try next year." So, nevertheless. This conversation came up, and so there's been a whirlwind on first take with Stephen A. Smith and mm. Shannon Sharp, uh, and just men in general trying to over explain, mansplain, mm. as some are saying, <laughs> what is happening. And it's just not true. You know, the, the, the mainstream media and, and, and these analysts and commentators are trying to create a narrative mm. that is saying that the whole WNBA is hard on Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is a victim. Oh my Whoa God. Well, it's Caitlin Clark. And it's just not true. Mm. It's like, to, to Angel Reese's point, if we really look at the bigger picture, if that moment wouldn't have happened, because that's when I started watching the WNBA. Right, 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 I mean, right. And, and even um, college basketball, I started there first. So mm. this is my first official season watching the WNBA. And it's because of Angel Reese. And Caitlin Clark. Right. Not just Caitlin Clark. That's why everybody is all up in this. But back to my point, all of this is happening in a narrative that is making Caitlin Clark the victim. Yes. She's, it's, it's just not but isn't so. But that, isn't that the way the country goes where it's like the, the things get attention when like a, a white person, particularly a white woman, is like, oh, I'm the victim. Oh, they're hurting me. Oh, my God, I can't handle this. And then they expect. So it's the narrative of like the weak willed, the weak will, but well to do white woman. And then the strong, independent black woman that should be able to take this. And how dare she? Like, that's always been a narrative. Right, right, right. But yeah. And, and, and so if that moment wouldn't have happened, Caitlin Clark just would have been the number one draft pick like the mm. WNBA has had for years. Number yeah. one draft pick. But there is something about this rookie class. It's not just those two either. It's Camilla. It's the it's the um the young lady that plays for the Lakers mm. that that's affiliated with um what's uh the gentleman from the Golden State Warriors uh oh god oh Steph Curry Steph Curry yes yeah yeah um so it's all of them that are bringing attention and amplifying something that should have been amplified but yeah. the way mainstream media I think it just it it, it it speaks to just how race and systemic racism is woven throughout every entity in our government, society, and even pop culture. Yeah, it's very true. It's 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 interesting because I think also uh, speaks to like uh, just how the gender stuff works also because it's like you know women were playing well for years and right. to be fair you know it takes stars like you know when basketball first started it was all white dudes and then black dudes started playing and it got popular off of that so this mm-hmm. is a situation where you had a very popular uh, black woman and a white woman like that were able to make people put eyes on the sport and all at the end of the day all these. Things the entities care about is like, are you going to bring money in? So at the right. point where these women were causing people to watch, that's I why mean, you I have these it. women getting like brand, brand names and stuff now, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But that still speaks to like the the treatment level of both women in the sport, and then also like you said to your point, like both the, the races and stuff like that. Like it's all very sad in terms of how that's being handled. But you know, right, right. That's how that's how the country's been forever today. You know, so it, nothing at this point. Like I don't, I don't follow WNBA all, all like that. I barely watch NBA. So, but hearing that does does not surprise me. At right, all. right. No, I'm all in right now. I'm <laughs> all in because of that basketball game and Angel Reese. Yes. And y'all stop talking about her eyelashes. What about her eyelashes? And, I, sometimes men are crazy. I made the post yesterday. Like a, a lot of the um, the black uh, sports commentators, females were speaking mm. out, and they were saying some very interesting things but i reposted one 
not interesting, but to the point, mm -hmm. matter of fact things. And I posted one and there were men on there talking about, well, maybe she shouldn't have those eyelashes and, you know, they shouldn't be sleeping with each other. And it's like, wow. why are you so involved with what women are doing? The only thing you should be concerned about is them on the court. Right. That's it. Are they trying to make the point that because they have eyelashes, they can't see the ball on the court? Yeah, like one of them said <laughs> I was like, this is insane because these are the types of things that they wouldn't be saying or even considering about mm -hmm. men in basketball. Basketball. Yeah, because Den Dennis Rodman, I mean, he went on the court like that. Wear. Dennis Rodman was wearing his hair weird and wearing weird stuff off the court. Right. And, and, he, and, and, and yeah. Dennis Rodman was wearing nail polish and body piercings. And it's just like yeah. men are always trying to tell women what to do with their bodies. And there's a specific man. And I'm not, you mm. know, but it is like it's it's white men. It's, it's Republicans. Mm. They're always trying to tell us what we're supposed to do with our body, yeah. how we should look. And it's just that spirit of like, get off of me, get off of my body. Yeah. I mean, I'm so mad when uh, Marjorie Taylor Green Marjorie Taylor Green went at the the one Congress lady talking about, you know, oh, oh if you wouldn't rep Jasmine. Yeah, Rocket. yeah. Woo. And she gave her what she came she for. She did, and then it got to be a sound bite and it became a song. It was great. Right. She <laughs> gave her what she came for. Yeah, she was not having it, but like, yeah, you know that they were like, Oh, we're gonna she can apologize. I'm not gonna apologize. Okay, she's not gonna apologize. Like you can just let let that walk by, like and then that was why, what if, so if I were to call another member mm. a triple, uh, what is it, a big blonde, beach bad girl body, body, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, you know what I'm saying? If I were to do that, you know what I'm saying? To drive a point mm. about her talking about her lashes. And, and it's like, it's those passive aggressive racist things mm. That just are embedded in our Is that country. considered passive? That seemed like it was hell. Those things seem like they were hell obvious. But I mean, maybe just obvious to us because we just, we know what to look for. Yeah. Or, or, or they, sometimes like uh, my pastor would say, sometimes people are innocently ignorant. <laughs> but but in that instance, Marjorie Taylor Greene knew exactly what she was saying. Mm. She knew, she knew, she's, she, she's from Georgia. One of, you know, a racist state. Yes. You know, in the United States. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she knew exactly what she was saying. And because it's not 1890 or 1952 or yeah, 1960, yeah. she can't say it. Mm. She yeah. can't say it. She can't say but it. But back uh, yeah. then, she was one of the ones that would have been saying that would have said right, and it would have been called out for it. Like, oh, no. well, that's just what they're called. They call no. each other that. And blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. and 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 back then, Jasmine Crockett would have been censured, and she probably would have been uh, thrown something for similar. reacting, huh? For reacting to her. For her comments, yeah. I'm wow. talking about back okay. then. No, I'm saying, I'm saying yeah, that's, that's fascinating then. that would happen. Like, like, that Marjorie could have hypothetically back then yeah, said back a thing then and been fine, but, yeah. but if she got a retaliation for it, it's like, no, 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 like, yeah. whoa, that's, whoa, that's yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah. And yesterday I was, I, I posted something that she said because she was in the hallway talking, uh, cussing up a storm. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say it, but then I thought about our first lady, mm. our forever first lady. Our forever first lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, when they go uh, low, we, you go know, high. we go high. Yeah. And the thing about it is Jasmine Crockett said it in the right context. Mm -hmm. And to me, that wasn't even going low. That was asking a question. <laughs> if I would have said this, Yes, yes. Because she said that. But it's still a passive way of saying, I'm saying it, but not saying, saying it, it. Which it. is right, genius, right. by the way. But it was appropriate. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's going high because you're being appropriate. Mm, where you she know, just yelled, yelled it out. Oh, would have been... If they were in the halls of Congress, and oh, they yeah. like, boop, 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 boop. But she said it in a way, um, she's an attorney. She's a former attorney. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, she's an attorney. So, I mean, there you have it. D.C. in general is just weird. Like, obviously, you guys know that Trump uh, was found guilty on 34 counts last week, which was amazing. Because I, I, we had commented it like the day before it happened last week. I didn't know it was going to actually happen. But I, I was more amazed, not by the fact that he got convicted, but the fact that on the same day, this dude raised $33, uh, $53 million in support donations from contributors who basically felt as though he got robbed. How, how did you feel about, well, how did you feel about the verdict, first of all? Then how did you feel about the reaction from like the MAGA who are still supporting him? I'm glad that he was judged by his peers. Okay. And that they looked at the evidence and they found him guilty. That's mm. how our judicial system works. Yes. Okay. And so how I feel about it, um, 
karma, some would say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, what he put that woman Stormy Daniels through and what she still has to go through because of his mega followers are horrific. It's horrible. And she still has to go through that. Yeah. And so, you know, this is a way that he can be held accountable and mm. he can... Well, he's not going to understand because he's too old in a sense that... I mean, you know, we say with Trump, but Trump's been like that since his whole life. Yeah, it's just yeah. everything, like, everything always against him. It's them versus me. And right. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the victim. What was me? How dare they but come after I me? I say old, I just want to be clear. I'm not doing ages. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying like the older we get, the more set in our ways we get. True. Um, and he's definitely a double down type human being. And so he's not going to change. So I, I, I think that um, I can't wait to see what the sentencing is going to be. And then how do you feel about the people that are like giving him more money? Or a lot of people come out and, on, the, on the Republican side saying like, oh, this is a this is a sham trial that it was Joe Biden's fault. And it's, he has his goons. And even though, again, like because I think uh, John Stewart pointed out like both sides, both the, the prosecution and defense had to agree on jurors, had to agree on the evidence that was going to be presented like they both had to agree. So right. to be like. It, Joe, Joe Biden did this whole thing. And it's like, but the, the Republican side had a say in what was going to happen in the trial. Like, but how do you feel about all that? Um, I feel like, uh, how do I feel about what? Just about like the, the MAGA people still supporting him and giving him money. And, oh, yeah. the MAGA people. Um, I, those are his supporters. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, um, that's their rock star. So how I feel about it is election 2024 mm. and how Donald Trump can still be president because of those followers. Mm -hmm. And so how I feel about it is I feel like, you know, our country is in a state to where we don't know what the future is going to hold. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? How I feel about it is, you know, I think about Joe Biden and I think about the things that he's doing and it's not doing. And it's like, OK, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to forgive some of these student laws. Okay, hey, over here for you independents and Republicans, I'm going to shut the border down, kind of like what Donald Trump did, mm -hmm. because, you know, y'all like that type of stuff. <laughs> okay, you people over here, we're going to double down on Israel and the Gaza Strip and the Palestinians. You know, I'm not, I, I hear y'all protesters, but we rolling with Israel. So I mm. think about, like, that's how I feel about it is that I don't have somebody that I really want to vote for for president. Right. That's how I feel. Because it seems like everybody's like, because to, to, to the point that she just made, the fact that, like, the, yeah, I saw the news thing was like, oh, Joe Biden's going to be closing like the border down. It's like, <laughs> we got, Democrats got on Trump all day about, he wants to keep people out. He said he's going to close the border right. Mexico this and that. And yet, Obama did that more than Trump did and now Joe Biden's doing it. It's just like... But there's that's for the independents and for the Republicans. Like, mm. it's clear as day. That so, so that's specifically for to get, get them. Okay. Ones that, that, that said that if Trump was convicted that they wouldn't vote for him mm. or that are sick of him anyway and that are on the fence and you're trying to get the independents. So, that's your plea to them. Like, hey, I'm doing this over here. And it's, it's like, mm. I wish I had somebody that I really wanted to vote for. Yeah. Am I going to vote for the less of two evils or am I going to vote for the person that, you know, has done a lot? I'm not taking anything away from the Biden and um, Harris administration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just wish I had a better candidate to vote for. Hmm. I'm just going to be honest. Do you, uh, so they, who, who would be, I mean, you guys vote for Ted Kennedy. <laughs> That's not funny. But we also have um, Cornel West. Okay. And Dr. Melina Abdullah, who they're running, um, I think, on the Green Party ticket, but they're running. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I like uh, Wes Moore, the governor of Maryland. Okay. Um, I definitely, who else? I like him. He stands out to me. Um, Do you think a third party candidate could objectively actually win an election? Like without those strong back, because you figure like Republicans and Democrats, they have people that are helping raise money and they get a lot of support. So for independent, a trying to raise money is hard, trying to get ad time is hard, then trying to get support from people that barely know who you are, while you're trying to make a name for yourself is also hard. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's an actual possibility that a third party candidate could ever win? Uh, that that's not in Republican or Democrat. Not this election cycle. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised. I'm not saying it's impossible, but mm -hmm. I don't believe so this election cycle. But in the near future, mm -hmm. definitely. Interesting.
I, I do wish there were other, like, it's weird how the way our country's set up, but I mean, it's still, you know, we don't have a perfect democracy, but there are other countries where it's like, like with Russia, you know, oh, I have a candidate that wants to run against me. Uh, oh, he's going to mysteriously like be unalived. Uh -huh. And now I'm the only one like that happens. At least that doesn't happen here yet. Mm -hmm. Anything's possible. It hasn't happened yet. So at least there, we have that going for us. So we still get to have some sense of we get to choose, even though the choices are kind of made for us early on, right. you know? Right, right. Uh, let's see, on to some other stuff. There's so much stuff happening, so I don't know if you, I don't watch American Idol like that, uh, but- I don't uh, either. Yeah, so <laughs> I, well, I, I used to watch back in the day. I was a big, I, I was a big fan of when uh, Ruben Stutter and them were on. I, I watched that season immensely. I watched immensely. it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruben, by the way, is very nice. I was a server in Atlanta, and he and a friend came in one day, and his friend was an a-hole, but he was very, very nice and left me a $40 tip. I'll never forget him, so. Love Ruben to death. Anyway, so there was a uh, And single. that was before this inflation wave, right? So forty dollars. It was a lot. It was not for a first summer. <laughs> I was in Atlanta with a five hundred dollar apartment. Like, yes, that was a lot of money. Okay. So right. off of one table? Anyway, but yeah, so there was a singer, I believe it was on season five, her name was uh, Mandisa, and she passed away a few weeks ago, just like they found her dead in her apartment or home or wherever she lives. And so it came out this week that the reason she died was because uh, of obesity, specifically class three, which basically means that she was 100 pounds over what she should have been. Mm -hmm. Now. I have an issue with that because, you know, in our country today, there's a big body positivity movement going along where people uh, get mad if you're calling out people for being big and saying, hey, maybe lose some weight. This isn't the healthiest option. I had a cousin who was 25, like 10 years ago, that died because he was like 400 pounds and had a heart attack at 25. So I hear those things and think we, we push the idea of body positivity and you should do what you want so heavily, but clearly it's it's very destructive. What, do, what are your thoughts about the, the body positive movement in general and these kinds of things happening. And when you say body positivity, you mean like you can eat as much? As well, like for example, you know, you have. I mean, I don't want to call any particular singers because they get called out enough. But there, are, there are <laughs> there are entertaining people online that will push that. Oh, this is my body, and I want to do what I want. And you guys keep coming after me for X, Y, and Z. But like, I like being this weight and X, X, Y, and Z. And it's like, for for me, it just it just pushes such a. It pushes a way of being that ultimately is not really healthy and it's to people's detriment. But, I mean, people, obesity has been in existence since the beginning of time, right? Mm. Well, maybe not. Maybe not as much, but... I mean, I, they've done a lot to our foods as of late. In so American it, yeah. culture, yeah. It, it has been here since, you know, the Mayflower hit, yeah. so to say. Um, so, I, I think that that is a personal choice if you like to eat a dozen eggs or mm. whatever if that's not healthy for you like i can't i can't speak to like i don't want to like tell somebody what they can and cannot do um when it begins to mess with your health and of course it does and, mm. and you choose not to follow the doctor's instructions then mm. you know it's just like drinking it's just like drugs right it's just like anything in access is mm. not it, it you know um anything that you overindulge in mm. is not good for you so no it's not healthy but I mean, I'm not going to encourage anybody to overdo it, mm. but I mean, if the cousin at Thanksgiving <laughs> wants to eat, you know, a quarter of the turkey and mm. half of the ham, they've been doing it their whole life. Yeah, I guess, because I, I, I get the idea of like, if it's a, like, for example, like it's, it's a personal narrative, if we decide to overindulge or whatever it is, what it is, but I feel like there are influences out there, because I, I think about it goes beyond just a person. I think about a, a, a like a person that's famous, for example, is now, um, very heavily influencing, no pun intended, heavily influencing other people to say like, oh, I was going to work out, but this person over here said that it's actually fine that I'm at this body weight, so I'll do what I want to do. But see, I don't give, <laughs> no pun intended, that person that much weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> because the person that wants to eat, they're going to eat anyway. They just identify with somebody that likes to do the same things that they do. Mm. High five. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I don't think that, that a certain person can influence somebody. You don't think so? To be obese? Yes. No. I think about, no, I think about no. the fact that like... People who want to eat are going to eat. People been eating forever. Well, I know, but also I think about like, you know, people, like for example, somebody that's on drugs might see somebody that they, they admire that was on drugs and be like, oh, like they got off drugs. That can be my drug. Like people, I don't think people really are aware of just how heavily influenced we are by the things we choose to wear, how we choose to act, how we choose, like, like all this stuff. We think it's like our own choices, but we are heavily influenced. Like if the 1969 project didn't exist, you wouldn't wear that shirt. 1619. So, oh, 1619 project didn't exist, you wouldn't 
wear that shirt. So but it's like, no, 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 no. You can't. That's not the same thing. This is like education. This is so, education. So, so, she were, so, but, but you had to see that and somewhere because, in order to. You know, but I yeah, but you can't compare somebody's hobby to being enlightened and educated. Mm-hmm. That's two different things. I mean, look, there, there are people that are obese, for example, that are like, uh, like. Uh, plus size, like plus size models, right? So you have a girl up there that's like, well, as regular old me, I can't get a modeling job. And if I just gain some weight, like my favorite person is that I'm following, I can get jobs too. Like that, even though that's not something we would do, that that's is- That's a small fraction though. I think, I don't, I think that's a small fraction of somebody saying, oh, I'm going to go gain weight because I want to be a plus size model. Mm. If you a plus size and there, I see a plus size model, I'm just going to be more comfortable and my plus mm-hmm. because but I don't think that that is encouraging that person to eat more. I'm just saying I would not be surprised. Like, again, there, there are stars that, for example, have shows where it's like, hey, I'm going to bring on other big girls. Now, to be fair, to your point, those big girls could have already been big. Yeah. I'm just saying I'm, I'm just saying as humans, we get influenced by a lot of stupid stuff. And so there could be somebody that's legitimately like I was like mid, maybe mid tier. And then they, I, I realized if I go gung ho like that person with food, I can like make a career no, out of it. Because typically, typically. Typically, you know, there are some people who have eating disorders mm-hmm. from the anorexic side to the obese side. Okay. So there are some people who have who have just, you know, those type of disorders. Mm. But most people who are obese, they want to lose weight. For example, mm, look at true. Lizzo. Yeah. Lizzo has lost a significant amount of weight, mm. but she's also not ashamed of her body mm. and 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 you could tell as you've watched her evolve i'm more um knowledgeable of that than her music mm. but i've watched her evolve and struggle with being okay with her weight mm. and empowering other oversized women to not be feel shamed about it mm-hmm. but i've also watched her lose weight too mm-hmm. because she understands how does one push those two things where it's like okay i'm because i'm losing we, weight but don't be ashamed of you but i'm losing weight but don't be ashamed of you like, no because two things can be right at the same time mm-hmm. because i'm challenged by because i like to eat you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying but I also am understanding as I get older mm. that if I want to continue to do the things that I do, that I am going to have to change my diet. Mm. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and somewhere in that lies your balance, mm. right? But I don't think that um, oversized or plus women are having women out here. Mm. Now, BBLs, mm. lip injections, oh my God. those types of things. Yeah. Totally different story. Yes. But I don't think that people are, um, like, for example, I think it's the opposite. Fashion Nova released, I think, this week, uh, their their bodysuit collection. Okay. And they, and, and they, um, and, and they, the way that they phrased it was, you know, like they were displaying like all shapes and sizes, like no body shaming or whatever. Mm-hmm. But everybody on there was skinny. There were no plus size women, mm-hmm. but they were promoting body diversity. Um, and then the only there was only one woman of color, a black woman, so to say, and she was gorgeous. I mean, skin flawless, but <laughs> it was just like missing the mark of the tagline. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I just think that those are more issues that we should be concerned about than thinking that somebody is driving obesity because they're okay mm. with being plus. Well, my other question is, I have also noticed, well, this is more particularly to women in particular, is that, like, let's say, for example, like a Missy Elliott, right? Like, Missy Elliott was big at one time. Right. Everybody was like, go, big girl, this is that. And then she lost, like, weight. But wasn't and- she sick? She, no, no, she just, she just, she, I mean, she, she was fluctuating, but like there was a point in, like when her third album came out under construction, right. that's when she had first started losing the weight. So right. she's, she's done it later for health reasons, but I think early on she was just trying to get fit. But the point is when she did that, a lot of people in her, like, like that were fans of hers that were women lambasted her and said like, how dare you? Why are you losing weight? Blah, blah, blah. Like they took it like a personal offense that she was losing weight. And I never understood why it is. I, I see more women do that. When, when a star that it was big, even same with Jennifer uh, Hudson, she lost weight. People got on her about why are you losing weight? And this is net. And they try to explain it. And those women are still like, they feel insulted by that. And I never understood why that well, they was. They probably feel left behind. You but that, but, but at your point, like if they weren't influenced by that person, then wouldn't they 
not be bothered when they just be like, oh, like she lost weight, yay, versus like, oh, I feel a personal front and attack on me, even though it's her journey. But like I said, they identify, they um, identify with that person probably. And so that person made it okay. And that person was successful and succeeded mm -hmm. because they were, you know, and they were just, I, I see myself in that person. Yeah. So then when that person decides to change and then it's like, well, wait a minute, we were okay. And we were winning in this mm -hmm. space. But then like, like I say, your body is a personal journey and how you feel about it and what you're okay with today mm -hmm. might not be the same tomorrow, but that is a personal thing. And, and that goes back to being a celebrity, like mm. even going all the way back to when we first started with Northam, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is criticism in that space. And so not only am I dealing with my weight, but I'm dealing with how people see me. And as just as many plus size people who applaud me, I'm in an industry where obesity is not the norm. Mm -hmm. And if I want to get certain roles, if I want to do certain things, I am going to have to get my weight together. You see what I'm saying? And yeah, so yeah. you have these people saying, you have these agents in your ear, you have your managers in your ear saying, okay, you know, we're here, but now you got to get here. Right, which I also find interesting because I'm like, for, for such people that, that, that get signed when they're big, you got signed in part because you were big. So to go from that to like, oh, now you got to lose all this weight. Again, I'm all for people losing weight. I have family members now that are in their 50s and 60s that are like having major health problems because they decided to get that extra piece of chicken when they were in their 40s. So, but, but, but that said, if you're signing somebody when they are big, to go from that to be like, okay, now you gotta lose weight, I'm like, I, I don't understand that it's journey either. It's not necessarily you have to lose weight if you wanna get to here. You have to lose weight. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay here, you're fine. Oh, uh, okay. So it's a it's a progression here, situation. Then you have to lose the weight. Okay. You that, see what I'm saying? That, that hypothetically makes more sense, I guess, in you terms of I'm that saying? kind of stuff. Yeah. Or the doctor could be saying, okay, this person um, is touring and their blood pressure is here. Mm -hmm. They can't sustain it without having a heart attack on stage. Ha. So they have to get here. Or you want this role in a movie. Mm hmm. It was okay for this movie, but if you want to get to this movie, mm. you have to get here. So, okay. Or it could be personal. I'm just tired of being overweight mm -hmm. and I want to get here. And then there are those people who are totally comfortable. But if you look at society, like even you talked about Ruben Stutter, mm. I don't think anybody- yeah, He lost a lot of weight too. I don't think anybody wants to have trouble breathing mm. as they get older. I don't think, you know, nobody wants to feel heavy. Mm. So I think that's what it's more about when you've had enough. Right. Like I, smoking. I, I think I just wish people got that lesson early because, again, it's like I think people, you know, that are big in their 20s and 30s, they're thinking like, oh, we live day to day. So it's like, oh, you know, I'll be fine this and that. And they don't think about like at 50 and 60, even if they lose the weight, like uh, what's his name? Uh, Idi Amin just had a heart attack. Like he was a bit big. He's been working out. He's actually lost a bunch of weight. He still had a heart attack in his 50s because back in his 30s, he wasn't being the healthiest person. So it's like we don't, we're not we don't really stay conscious of the things we're doing early in life are going to affect us down the road, and down the road, we're, we're gonna probably but, less likely be able to handle it, you know. Right. But that goes for anything, not just not just mm -hmm. obesity. That goes for from alcohol consumption. That goes to working out. Mm. You know, with some people who never work out, myself included, and I'm in a space now where I want to take vitamins. I want to work out. So I just mm. think that it, it that's just not isolated to, you know, weight. Yeah. It's it's across the spectrum of knowing in your twenties stuff. That could go for finances. You know what oh, I'm very saying? Very true, so yeah. It could go for anything. It's just, you know, and when you know better, you do better. Yeah, I know. I, I think part of it's also I wish they taught well, they teach us a little bit about the health stuff in school and whatnot and money things, but they really I wish, I wish they focused more on that stuff versus like, hey, in nineteen forty two, like we get it. Can you just tell us something that's going to actually help us with our lives? Like, right. you know, not just run the track, but also like why do you run the track? And then, you know, things like what good food is in versus out. And you with this food kick. I'm just, I'm just, again, the lady died. It, they, they found her in her apartment like a few days after she died. So that's already a bad thing. But just the fact that like she just was just sitting there and just up, oh, just died because of all her being extremely people overweight. Just like die, have an aneurysm and just die. No, that's totally true. But I'm just, you know, her thing was. People have a heart attack or a stroke and just die. I'm just like, this is the thing 
thing that she died from that's like that was preventable and she again she made her choice not to so i feel bad for her but she made the choice not to do that and so i just i'm like the things that are preventable like that that goes to like again education influence what you're around having self-control and i just wish that you know i think again we we forget that we're people of habit and once we develop bad habits it's hard to break them right. and learning how to develop those earlier because i don't know what her family life feel like growing up but i'm like that's a thing that like you grab onto and then it's really hard to break later. And she didn't have to die like that, but because she was not taking care of herself, that, so I did. and again, I've had people in my family just, it's a, it's a definitely an issue for me because I've, I've seen that. And then even with me, like I'm like 178 now, I'm trying to get back down to 164. So I'm like 10 over, right. but it's like, I'm always, I'm always being mindful. Like, okay, if you get to this line, like try to stay here. Cause it, I've, I think the biggest I've been is like 192. And at 192, I was having a hard time breathing and like I was cranky all the time. Like it did not feel good. And that was just like at 25 pounds over. I can't imagine people getting 100 pounds over. Like it, it's just, you know, <laughs> because it's not good. But anyway, so that's just, yeah, that's what that's about. So, uh, got Nick. lastly, oh God. So I saw this story this week. Let's say I actually clicked the link to this because I wanted to make sure I got this right. Uh, there, so there's been an, in California specifically, there's a law that passed, um, I think it's on here, but, uh, it's some law called, uh, SB 132. And that is a law that basically says it allows, uh, prisoners that identify as trans mm -hmm. to be housed in a facility consistent with their gender identity. And this is a bill that was heavily fought and won. We, we won, right? So the story that I read though was, uh, third strike trans, uh, sexually harassing suspect prompts rebellion against CA law after attacking women's prison. So basically this guy who identifies as trans, he's 51 years old, uh, he was a biological male who decided after the law was passed to identify as a female so he could go into a female prison and now he's being accused of SAAing somebody. And this is not a shock to me, but this to me really speaks to like, I, you know, I don't have necessarily a problem with, with trans people fighting for particular rights, but I think there needs to be a level of common sense. As, as a woman, how do you feel about the idea of a biological male who's identifying as trans going to a female prison? Well, first off, happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> Queer <laughs> Month. <laughs> a, you know, interesting story for this month. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I just think that, you know, our nation has evolved, right? And we are trying, we are, we are striving to be a more inclusive nation. Yes. Um, but with that, there has to be some type of, um, you know, learning, learning curve. We're on the learning curve. Yes. Part. We're on the learning curve. And so we have began to create, you know, a space for the queer community within our nation, which we should. Yes. People should be able to love who they love. Yes. Um, but we also need to be realistic about, you know, having boundaries and borders. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that's what's lacking within this whole policy, laws, um, what's acceptable, what's not, is that we need to clearly define what is what. Mm -hmm. If you're a male, you're a male. You're not a cis male. You are a male. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, if you are a female, you are a female. If you were born that way, if you were born a male, you're married. Not cis to make other people feel comfortable because sometimes making people feel comfortable mm -hmm. is not really doing society any good. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So if you were born a male, you're a male. If you were born a female... Yeah, and there's a reason why if you transition, there's there's the word trans in front of that. Because right. saying you were once this, but now you're this. You right. weren't born as. Right, you I'm are, getting to yeah, that. Yeah. I'm getting to that. So if you are gay, that means that you like men. Yes. If you are lesbian, that means that you like women. Women like women. Yeah. If you are trans. That means that you identify, you were born one way, but you identify and have made the transition to be another way. Mm. Because there are some people who, you know, it, it's just so much going on with the letters, mm. which is fine because that's the, the community. Yeah, yeah. But if you are trans, that doesn't make you a woman. It just makes you identify that that's how you feel like you want to identify yes. and you have made the transition. But there are certain qualities that make a woman and there are certain qualities that make a man. 
you can't have a baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, there's certain levels to the surgery that you have to get to be, you know. So hmm. I, I feel like it's not just if you're trans, then they probably need to start making prisons for trans, right? Well, I, I thought it. Or, yeah, or yeah, yeah. having space, like if you are a trans woman then you need to have a trans unit in a male prison. Mm -hmm. If you are a trans man, then you need to have a unit in the women's prison for trans. Mm. Just like you have a unit for murderers. Just like, I mean, it's, it's mm. real simple, but I feel like some people from both communities want to make it more complicated than it really is. Than it needs is. to be, yeah. Because they're trying to they're trying to appease a variety of groups. So it's like, well, we don't want to, you know, if they psychologically see themselves as a woman, we don't want to cause them trauma by putting them with men to work for, for their own mental to health. They're going to. Well, I'm saying I agree. Like, and then yeah. The, all all of that is in that unit, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's just like sports. Mm -hmm. Just because you you identify as a woman. It doesn't mean that you still don't have the the the, the build and the, the bone the, structure, the, the ability, <laughs> emotion of a man. Yeah. So why should you? That's not fair to me as a woman, mm. and that's not fair to men to be competing with women. Mm. And then it's just you know some things are self-explanatory, but like I say, I think both communities, mm. you know, make things harder than it has to be, and there's a, a lack of you know, sensibility and reality that nobody wants to compromise about. Right. And then and then what, what tends to happen is, like, I don't like being called a cis female. Mm. I, the word cis, female. the word cis in front of male already sounds suspect. Real talk. Like <laughs> what's up, cis male? Like it just doesn't flow. I, I just feel <laughs> like, you know, it's like you, I'm a female. I'm not a cis. Mm -hmm. Like, you're transgender. And I love you to death about it. I, yeah. mm -hmm. One of my closest friends is transgender. And we have this conversation all the time. Um, and I'm just so glad that Flame, you know Flame. I know Flame, yes. Flame I'm very educates familiar. educates me on all of these things that, um, some things that I don't know or some things I have a better understanding of. Mm -hmm. But I love the space that she sits in. Well, he, she, we, that's her tagline. He, she, we. <laughs> but I love the space that she sits in because she's very clear on the decisions that she made and who she is. And she doesn't try to enforce that on anybody. Right, right, right. That's true. I think in terms of the whole prison thing, here's my thing, guys. All right. So, and because a lot of these like social issues really like are, they're, how do I say? Because most guys are kind of like, we'll get involved a little bit here and there, but we're not really into, but a lot of these these social justice movements are started by women or like are, are very are very utilized by women in terms of being in the space. And so I, th I think this, I think that uh, I, I've made an observation and this, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about this. I've made an observation that there are more uh, men that transition into women that try to get into women's spaces than women that transition to men and try to be in men's spaces. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it's it's interesting that, you know, as a man, I'm gonna tell you this all the time, right? We're gonna try to get what we want in whatever way we can. And if that means having to take advantage of a loophole, we will do it. And so these guys are in prison. This law passes in California and guys are like, you know what? I didn't have some action in a while. You know what? Oh, I feel like I'm a woman now and I don't wanna get my parts chopped off. But I, I, just, I just feel like a woman. And so, you know what? I need to go to prisons because that's what I'm gonna be. And like you're saying that he did that only yes. to sleep with women. I'm you, saying you're saying that I'm he saying does not, I'm saying he, men are that diabolical. Yes, but you're saying this man decided yes. to go that he was gonna be transgender just to sleep with women. Yes, that is what I'm saying because I don't know about he, that. I'm, I'm just saying I'm not saying this is all trans men. I'm saying the there there are several cases now of men that are identifying as women without getting makeup on, without getting their parts done, without getting injection without you know, all that stuff that go to female prisons and then this happens. It's not a coincidence. Dudes are also inherently horny and I mean women are too but like men that are wanting some action they've been in prison around much of dudes for a long time they're going to find 
kind of way. So if a law passes where it's like, oh, if I just say identify, because spoiler guys, it used to be back in the day you had to be like, you had to actually do a bunch of stuff to prove that you were actually trans. But now because of, realistically, uh, doctor fields and medical fields are like trying to, the hospitals get paid more if you have those surgeries, which means they need more patients, which means they're not gonna ask as many questions now. If you just call places and say, hey, I feel like I'm trans, oh, okay, great, you're trans now. So these guys are taking advantage of that and they're going into these female prisons. So you're saying a lot of men are taking advantage of the of the of the queer community. Well, no, they're taking advantage of women because women are going to feel. Uh, my my thoughts always been like women really get along well with like gay men and trans people in general because it's like that's one less man that is that is threatening them in terms of like you know their their sexual autonomy. So the belief is that oh this is a trans woman this guy's no longer a threat to me because he he's identifying as a woman yay me and and men know that women will fall for that. So that we know we can give a sob story. Oh, I, I feel trans in my life and blah, 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 blah. Oh, we feel so sorry for you. And then they'll put him in the prison and then th this thing will happen. I, I, Not all the time, but it, there's enough cases out there that show this happening. So. I think that's like, that's like rare. That's just as rare as you saying that, that, that people want to be obese because they identify with their, they see their, this person. Mm. I mean, that, that's a rare case. I'm not saying that mm. this guy is... Is is or it wanted to be transgender or not? I'm saying that common sense policies and mm -hmm. laws, because we were talking about a law, yeah, um, should be more sensible um, mm -hmm. to this to, to to where we are as a nation right now. Mm -hmm. And if we are saying that transgenders um, need a space mm -hmm. in prisons, then create a unit. Mm -hmm. But if Transgenders should not be integrated with 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 general population in male or female prisons. They within, should have a unit on uh, the yard. But then the problem is, aren't you? Because like the reason we have female and male prisons is because we're trying to separate them out so, so these so these things can't happen. Like a transgender jail would have both trans men and women there. No, 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 no. If you are a transgender female, mm -hmm. then you should be in a unit on a male yard. That could be debatable. That's why mm. you have, you bring it to the floor and you work it out because it might flip-flop. I wonder how much money that but would cost I'm to do. But I'm just saying <laughs> that how you were born, mm -hmm. that's how you should be identified with. And I know this is where it gets sticky right, right. because this is where all the conversations and this is where you lobby and we're talking you specifically on to the floor and then it might flip-flop. If you mm -hmm. are a transgender female, then mm -hmm. you're on the yard with the females, but in a different yeah. unit. I guess and you're not allowed to populate. I guess my thing also is like, I guess for a person that's, because again, there's a court of law, there's people that go to prison, and then like, for all we know, they could actually be innocent or not innocent. But I, I'm saying, as a generality, I think if you go to prison, you lose your right to be where you are identifying. Like, oh, I'm a male, but I'm gonna identify as, as female. Well, you did a crime, Ooh, and so, tough. I know, because again, they could be innocent. So that's that's a tough thing to say, but like, also don't do things that maybe might get you in front of a court of law. Like, just, I don't know, just, because I, I, I feel like, again, I feel the same way about the, the sports thing. Like, I think men also, like there was that swimmer that like, oh, I saw that she, he was on the, the male team swimming and was losing all the stuff, and then, oh, I'm gonna identify as a woman, and then like, he, yeah, he took, I, I like. I think our laws, because we're talking about a law, I think that mm -hmm. um, we need to have a more sensible approach mm -hmm. to how we incorporate, because all, all of this is new. Technology, mm -hmm. new. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, internet, new. You know what I'm saying? Look at how the TV industry is dealing with technology and apps. And All this mm. stuff is new. And so we're still figuring it out. Um, but I think there needs to be more sensibility when we uh, attack, uh, approach these things. Mm. You know, right now we're talking about laws that have to do with, you know, the queer community. You know, there's also a conversation that needs to be had about technology. Oh, my and God. And how, yeah. how there's no regulation. That there's no regulation for cell phones, internet, mm -hmm. apps, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all these things. And there needs to be a conversation. Are they going to fall under regulation lines with the FCC, just mm -hmm. how television and radio are governed yeah. by federal government? Or are you going to create a whole new department 
for technology that incorporates mm. all of that. So mm. all of these things are new, which is which is great. We're more a perfect, inclusive nation to where we respect people's choices, yeah. except a woman's right <laughs> to choose for her body. You know, yeah. but we're not talking about that. We can we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. That's another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all of these things, it's new. But I think our lawmakers need to be more sensible and practical about how they're how, how they're how they're making these laws and how they are executed. Yeah. And also like like in terms of like the whole prison thing, like really looking at, OK, if they're going to identify a certain way, like. At, at the very least, at the very least, make people have had the surgery. Like, so I'm reading the story where it's like the the, the guy was like said says uh, one of the alleged victims of this guy it happened on January 30th uh, was a biological female um, and said that this trans woman attacked her in the shower uh, and you know did things to her without her consent. And then the complaint also mentions another identified victim. So that's two people because this dude still had his stuff and still do stuff. Now, I'm not saying if he didn't have his stuff, he couldn't do that. But I'm saying at the very least, it would be a lower probability than the fact that the parts are all still there. So there needs to be some kind of like, if we're going to if we're gonna allow this to happen, like what things are replaced? Maybe they have to but be. But no, you're right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, those are things that the lawmakers need to, to hash out. Hmm. OK, what what qualifies you to even be in the prison. Yeah. And maybe that is the solution. If you have had the full trans surgery, mm -hmm. then that's a different conversation. Yes. But if you have not had the full surgery, you could cause harm to other inmates. So you should not be allowed. You should not be allowed. Yeah. So we need the lawmakers, California lawmakers, to go back, yes. revise, amend this law, and, and put some more stipulations. Like Don't make it so vague. And, yeah. and, 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 and boundaries are good. Yes. We are becoming a nation where boundaries are out the window. Boundaries are good. <laughs> yes means yes. No means no. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Boundaries are good. Yes, boundaries are very, very good. So... Uh, I think that's all I pretty much had to talk about. Uh, so yeah, like I said, it's been a crazy week. I'm sure there's gonna be more stuff happening that we're gonna talk about next week. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got. So uh, it's good, good times, people. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm APT Songs. Thanks for watching this. Be sure to comment down below. We'd love to hear what you'd like us to talk about on these shows because we're constantly on news sites and and we're also in the the, the area of doing this stuff. Right. I just went to a thing this past weekend for uh, the She Ready Foundation. They had a whole like uh, prom. Oh, wait, the She yeah. Ready Foundation is Tiffany yeah. Haddish. Yeah, so so Tiffany Haddish has a um, foundation called the She Ready Foundation and they raise money for foster youth because she was once a foster youth as well. And every year she holds, well, this is her second year doing it, but she, she holds an annual uh, adult themed prom to raise money for her organization. And so that has all kinds of, of celebrities. I saw Raven Simone there. I saw Cedric the Entertainer. Uh, just a, a bunch of great people that were there for a good cause. And so, yeah, so we're, we're in this kind of stuff like quite regularly. She's going to stuff quite often between stuff in the politics and stuff in entertainment. Like, yeah, I'm a, if you don't know, I'm a journalist. Um, I do this for a living, um, work for uh, publications, networks. Uh, to, uh, currently working at In the Black Network, which is a app like Netflix and Hulu. Yeah. Um, have a special on there called What's at Stake, where we talk about the issues that are impacting um, African Americans, people of color during this election cycle. Um, have people from Capitol Hill, uh, from NAACP, yeah, uh, heavy political too. packs. So. Definitely go check it out. Just download the In the Black Network app. But yeah, so like I said, we're in it. So whatever you guys want us to cover, we are happy to do so on this on this show. But for now, thank you very much for watching and tuning in to another episode of Random Ass Conversations. We will be back with you guys next week. All Peace. Right. Peace out.